So Harold, I guess one of the frustrating things from a public work standpoint or a public servant standpoint is we're trying to look at a short-term and a long-term planning horizon. You know, and, and for us, uh, because generally speaking, we're in it for the long haul. You know, we're, we're here trying to make a difference in our community and we want to make sure that the people coming right behind us don't have to wrestle the exact same issues we, we want fixed. So we're looking at a like a two-year horizon for short term, um, knowing that, you know, that covers this year's budget, covers next year's budget. We know what we're trying to accomplish in that two-year time frame. Uh, this is all assuming we have a good capital improvement program in place. Uh, and then we're looking at long term. We're looking at 10 years out, 20 years out, sometimes 30 years out or more, uh, just to make sure that we are hitting our targets and our goals as we move forward as an organization. Now, I understand that um, from an elected official standpoint, those may not be the same short term and long term horizons? Oh, uh, elected officials are all over the board. Um, there's so many things to consider. For example, if elected officials have a two-year cycle, then there's a filing time, and then there's time up to the election, then there's prep before the filing time, so that might be nine months. And in a two-year cycle, they're basically running for office all the time. So they're speaking and thinking and sound bites, which might be really difficult for staff to figure out. Uh, whereas if you had a four-year term council member, then they're more governing and less running for office. And that might resonate long-term. The long-term might resonate better with them. And then you have a mix of the two. Uh, there's so many types of leadership style that could come into play there. Uh, so I think it's important to have these plans solidified. But if you're working with a council that's being uh, elected every two years on alternate years, which means half of them go out every year or could go out every year, then it's going to be extremely difficult. Even with four-year terms, it may be difficult to determine how the council is going to react to a presentation, of, especially of long term, when half of them can go away. I'm on a council of seven, and four of us are up this year. And if we all get thrown out, uh, then you've got a completely different mindset. What are they going to think about public works? You know, are they going to say, no, no, let's slash the budget. We don't need to do all these, all these things that are putting us in the Cadillac position. Let's just go down to the Volkswagen position, and we could save tons of money. You know, that might be their mindset. Who knows? Uh, but it depends a lot on the elected officials, just like you said. But see, from our standpoint, uh, we're looking at it as, and this isn't a negative thing, uh, public works, we always have to be in a position of educating our elected officials on what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, because our plans are much longer than an election cycle. Uh, so every year, every other year, every third year, whatever your cycles are in your community, uh, we are constantly educating new council members or new board members, whatever their titles may be, uh, on here's our plan, here's why we have this plan, here's the steps it took to get us to this point, here's what we've accomplished, here's what we're hoping to accomplish next as part of this. Uh, so there's a, a real educational burden on the public works folks to make sure they're communicating that with their elected officials. Uh, it also puts a burden on us to make sure that our plans are up to date uh, so that we're not working off old information as we keep moving forward. Uh, plans that sit on the shelf Mm -hmm. uh, and just never come to life. The, that, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about our capital improvements. We're talking about new water lines, new lift stations, new roadway improvements, all of those kind of things. Uh, and we just have to be in a constant education uh, mode for our elected officials. I think you're exactly right. Uh, I know that when I'll, I'll admit something that I probably shouldn't say in public, but I've been elected for almost 20 years. And I remember the first year, I really didn't understand 
that much of the difference between a capital budget and an operating budget. You know, I did, but not really. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand the impacts as well. And staff had to educate me the first year. Every time something came up, had to explain in detail what this really meant and what this really was about. And uh, without that, I was just making blind decisions. So yeah, it's a big role and it's an important role well, that staff has played. And that's an excellent example of just one piece of that because you know, we talk about our O&M budget, and that's operations and maintenance, and that's the money that we need every year to simply do the, the operational and maintenance type items that, that come in front of us. That capital budget is for those really large uh, new improvement projects or really large replacement projects for our existing infrastructure. So we're two entirely different things there and, and you fund those two different things in entirely different ways. And that's probably you know, a whole nother conversation we could have on that. Yeah, I think you also build a relationship with elected officials by doing that education and build the trust uh, that they definitely need when they're making decisions. Uh, build that trust with the staff by doing that. So it's very important. Excellent.